Hi everyone, I'm Lynn from Finds of Yesterday and it's a cold wintry day in Illinois and it's January 2nd. What better day than to start your bookkeeping for the year? So I'm going to share with you if you're a new reseller, this might be helpful, hopefully, and I hope to not confuse you because it's all technical. And it's an Excel sheet that I use on a daily basis to keep track of every sale that I make and whether it's on eBay, Poshmark, or Macari. So let's turn the camera around and I'll show you my screen and show you exactly how you can create one in your Excel or Google Documents. It should be about the same. So, so come with me and check it out. All right, so this is my sales report for the whole year. And what I do is create a template to start with to use every month. I don't have the whole year created in my daily sales report. I just create a one month template and then I just copy and paste at the, fir the first day of each month from the empty template. This is as simple as I can get it because I don't want to make this complicated and I don't want it to take too much of my time every day, which it, it is time consuming enough and I don't want it to be any more complicated than it is. So this is something that I created myself and I created the template and I take it, insert it into my annual document monthly. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. So we're going to go through each, uh, each column and I'm going to explain what I'm doing here and how you can create one on your Excel sheet. You might have to pause this video and just do it as I'm saying it to make it a little bit easier. But let's go across the top here first. As you can see, it says January up here. So I know this month is my first month and the gross profit in the middle here is an annual running total. So I know from day to day exactly what kind of gross profit I'm making. And you go off to the right here in the green box, it says annual net profit. I know exactly what my net profit is at all times. And I can look it up any day of the week and know exactly what my net profit is. And my profit margin is just your net profit divided by your gross profit. So let's just put in some examples here and give you an idea how this works. So your first column, you would want your date sold, which is today, say January 2nd, 2020. Oh, it's 2022. And I have in my custom SKUs on all my listings, my code for the date that I listed that item my price is in there and my bin number is in there as well. So you know everything just by that SKU number and you can create any kind of SKU you want and how you understand it. But let's just say I put this in in 2021 in October and the item I usually just copy and paste directly out of my orders page or the invoice and I copy paste, I put the buyer's name and the state. These two columns are not necessary, the buyer and the state, because I put it in just in case I need to refer back to it. And it does come in handy once in a while. So I just include it. I know it's a little more time consuming. And the cost of goods, let's say I paid a dollar for this item and the selling price, I sold it for $14.99 and they paid $5. So it gives me a gross profit of 1995 automatically in this column. So the way it's doing that is I created a formula in this box and I double clicked on it and it gave me what the formula is, which is equal sum parentheses G5, which it's taking G and five and putting it in here plus your HS. So it's giving you the sum of this column and this, not this column, but the, this line and this line. So the sum is $14.99 plus $5, and it gives me $19.99. Now, as you can see up here, I have the gross profit running total, and that brought this $19.99 up into this column. And 
And it did that by this formula, equals sum everything in this column for the whole year. It starts right here, which is my gross total and runs all the way through the whole year. So let's go back up. And now we're gonna put in our fees and expenses. So my actual shipping on this item say was 350. My eBay fee is usually about 11.5%, give or take some. So I don't know, let's say $2.30. And if I had it listed under an ad, which I have almost all my listings in with an ad, it is 21 cents or so. So my total net profit is automatically figured in this column. Do you see I didn't have to enter anything? It automatically generated from all this information over here. Now I had to put in a formula, which is equal sum. Then it takes the gross profit minus my cost of goods minus my three fees. And it totals it up to $12.98. So this item that I sold for $14.99 is profiting $12.98. Now, as you can see, this is all ready to go all the way down this column. All I did was you click on this and you see this little square in the bottom. You can take that and drag it all the way down. That's gonna add that formula to every one of these boxes. It's not gonna take the total, it's gonna take that formula that was in that in this top box and drag it into every one of these, which is a simple convenient way to have to do that. All right, so I did that the same in this column. So now you can see my gross profit, my net profit, and over here is my annual net profit it's saying I have a negative 4697. And I'll explain why it's negative there in a minute. Let's add another item. I'm gonna skip these and add, this one cost me $2 plus, um, let's make this one 50. And the shipping was $10. My actual shipping was 850, say $5 in fees. And this one had zero ad fees. Now I'm at 44.50 and it looks like I didn't do it high enough. So do one more. So my cost of goods is what I paid for the item minus the selling price. I sold this one for 25. Uh, the shipping the buyer paid was say $12. And my actual shipping was 10. My eBay fee was six. I uh, ain't quite accurate, but We'll go on and zero ad fees. So now I've got a total of these three being totaled over here. If you scroll down this column, it totals it to 7548, but it's got my eBay subscription fee automatically figured in monthly, which is 59.95. That's a store subscription. Not everybody's going to have that, but this is my fee I have to include. So it automatically takes my subtotal, which was $75 minus the eBay store subscription and gives me my net total of $15.53. Now I have it drug over here to the same amount that's here, just because I want it this, this box right here, this annual net profit to total everything that's in this column. So this is gonna give me my January. If I scroll down more, it's gonna have February's total and it's just gonna add all them together and keep it automatically figured all the time up here, my running total. And then the profit margin is 13% right now because it's taking my net profit divided by my gross profit. And that is figured by doing this formula, which is equals Q3 divided by J2. The divided by symbol is the slash. So we've got 13% and that's just because it's figuring in the store subscription fee, which kind of makes it not accurate, but it's close enough for me. I'm not too worried about it. It's an expense. It's part of the deal. I'm just figuring it in right away. 
You are going to have other expenses like your ink cartridges, your paper, things like that. Then we're all going to be tracked on a whole different sheet. I don't keep them on this. This is just my income and my expenses off of the actual items. So I can go down anytime I want and say, oh, I sold this these Christmas ornaments and they made me a net profit of $15. That's a good item. I might take that into consideration when I'm buying something else the next time I'm out and about. And I can do a summary to see exactly which one was my best selling item of the month, which I like to do and learn from that. And I can also see if I have a negative balance, which I can honestly say in the past three or four years, I have not had any that have had a negative balance. I've profited at least some on every item. If, it, if something's not selling, I usually just take it off and donate it. Uh, and it's usually, it's got to be over two years because sometimes you need at least a whole year for something to be listed to sell because it has to go through every season because it might be a seasonal item. So anyway, let's go back to this. Let's scroll down to the bottom. And over here, I have my gross which is 116 is the total of the three items that i sold and that brings it down to this column and again keeps that running total so you can see here the gross total is brought over from this amount up here minus any returns that i have you can see returns are over to the left each return would be listed in these next three rows if you need more row you can always insert another row which is up here this will bring the 116.99 down to this column. This amount you can see comes from this formula, which is equal sum parentheses, this amount right here, minus return, minus return, minus return. And it gives you the total right there. Now we scroll over to this side and you get the subtotal of all of your net profits from above and minus your eBay store subscription equals your net total. And this is your take home amount. This is the amount you put in your pocket, but you also have to include that you've got expenses, like I said before, the paper, et cetera. So this net total is brought over to here. Just, I brought it out in this empty column so that I can just make the net profit up here be my running total of everything in this column right here. I hope this is making sense to you. I hope I'm not making this confusing to you. You can definitely leave comments and questions in the comments below because I, I wanna get this explained well enough for you. So what I will do once that month is done and over, I have a template built that's empty and I will take this, and scroll over i just took it from the january all the way down to this january and i copy and paste that and then i go back down here and i copy this column which is control c and i put it over here to the right so it's out in this empty column so that it goes back up and totals into the an annual net profit. It will need to be updated a little bit because I'll need to take my January and change it to February. And I go down to this column and I change this January to February, et cetera, et cetera, for the whole year. Then down here where it says sheet one, I will right click on it and go up to rename and put in 2022. Now I know that, and hit enter, and I know that this is for the whole year of 2022. So if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. Please let me know if this video was confusing to you. If so, I can maybe try to recreate it, but it is a technical video and I know some of some people aren't as technical and I may be terrible at explaining this, but I hope that it helps you. I tried to go slow enough, um, but again, put your questions down in the comments. And if you did like it and it is going to help you as a new reseller, 
please like and subscribe. Thank you for joining me.